Hello and welcome to Halo Season 2, Episode 281, the breakdown for the Super Chat catch-up of that episode. The wonderful exploration into mm -hmm. the current state of Halo, which is oh boy. perpetually uh... enjoyable. Um, yeah, we, we've gotten together to have a little chat to all the messages that came in, and we're going to start with... If Joker 2 is a hit, we'll get Riddler with Timothy Chalamet and Mad Hatter with Killian Murphy. Um, maybe. I don't know what the fuck. If Joker 2 makes over a billion, I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen next for that franchise. Gotta make them wonder, you know. Especially if, you know, Superman comes out next year, it's like, oh yeah, 500 million. You thinking, Oof, ha. Wow, that would be fucking amazing if that happened, because it's just like, what the fuck are DC gonna do now? I mean, it's it's a it's a thought that I've had, which is, um, I wonder how they would feel if Superman began with something like 400, 500, where it's not, like, maybe they didn't lose money, but they barely made their money back, something along those lines, and whether or not that already would put them in a place of thinking, hmm, maybe, maybe, I, I just wonder, like, how much it would take to spook them out of, uh, not wanting to do it at all. Yeah, and like, just, if Superman can't else. do it, it makes you wonder, like, you know, well, I mean, maybe if we Superman just makes put him on cool million, for a while. What's it going to look like when the authority comes out, you know? I feel like they With must know that's not like, going to make budget. money or engagement. That's just, I don't know, it feels like they're indulging him I mean, for that one. I would say, yeah, like I, that's what it comes across to me as, is that he said, no, 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 trust me, it will work. And, and then they're just like, yeah, okay, even though who knows who the authority are, really, the by police. way of like general awareness it's, it's it's just it's it's kind of crazy that it isn't just immediately superman batman wonder woman right out of the gate that like that would be the three that you want to establish it almost makes you think there's a selection um, bias for like the people who are right at the top that they just can't be nerds because like nerds would never end up there. Uh, nerds in the sense of geek nerds that are obsessed with comic books and stuff I, I guess i guess i figured that that would make it to where when he says yeah i want to do the authority that they would say who is that like who what no no i haven't heard of them no you figured that that might be well, the case rather than... It could go that I direction guess, or it could go, I have no idea where that is. And it's like, I guess I'll have to trust you on that says, one. And then he trust me, they're yeah. really important in the DC canon, all right? <laughs> they're going to be great. Like, we own them know. and we don't know who they are. Some of the choices, you know, like The Authority, a Supergirl movie, Swamp Thing. Like, ooh, really? <laughs> like, right out of the gate? You got to lead with that? Okay. Uh, or like, um, Booster Gold, you know? Hmm. Hmm, just, I don't know, these, these just seem like strange. Now, they could all be great films. They need to all be great films. <laughs> That's the thing. They've all got to be good. They can't be okay, and they sure as hell can't be bad. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of absurd that we're in this situation, but it's, uh, I'm kind of at the point where I'm just kind of enjoying the fireworks of DC. Um, it's, I want good stuff, and I think um, we're going to get good stuff with, with, you know some of it <laughs> it's like that we should re realistically but good god what a what a powder keg ready to go off in any fucking direction at all and if joker 2 like you know it doesn't do what i'm more concerned with that film is that it's good if it makes over a billion like i can't i can't buy that todd phillips will make a third one that feels weird right i i mean it already feels like it was quite a uh quite a you know taking a chance on on doing a second one Especially saying I'm going to do a second one and it's a musical, you know. I would be I would be really surprised if they made a third Joker movie. Yeah, I mean, and if they did it, and then the trailer was like, the Riddler's coming to town and Batman is of age, you'd just be like, mm. <laughs> like whatever. If that's what it's going to become, but uh, I just don't envision that at all. I never, I've never gotten the impression, even from the little information we have of the second one, and then of course the first one that it's. Um, it's planning to be what people see as a Batman film in any way, shape, or form. Um, but who knows no, what the future holds? Uh, and like I said, it would be it would be again, fucking unreal if it made over a billion, considering all the things that are working against it. And at the same time, I don't see that as being particularly unlikely. The first film made a billion dollars. You know, I feel like it is. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not against the idea that it'll make a lot of money, but I just uh, going over a billion seems. What's well, like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what's what's reasonably going to happen because it is is it R-rated this one? Yes, yes. R-rated musical, just especially comic book based. It's like that's that's a whole combination of things that 
you know. It is, but at the same time, it, it is, you know, it is a sequel to a film that was that successful and, and has benefited not only from the amount of success that it had during its initial uh, box office run, but also all of the, you know, word of mouth, people watching it after it came out that's accumulated. I suppose the question would be, of the people who watch Joker, how many people do you think would want to go back and watch it again in theaters as a percentage of the of people who are interested? Hmm. It seems like it would be fairly high to me. Hmm. Maybe not 100%, but I, th I think it'd be high. I mean, it's well, just his a weird question... play, you know, the the whole, you know, the genre genre shift and the plan of what happens in DC. Like, how do you even predict this sort of stuff? You got to be quaking in your boots if you're talking about spending, you know, these kinds of millions on these movies if you're in their position. And of course, and they have spent a lot of money on it. And they have. And with the MCU, it's kind of the same thing in a different way. Yeah, like of, of just like, hey, I'm throwing out a movie that costs two hundred million dollars, yeah. and that means we need to make like six hundred, seven hundred million to make it worth it, and that's becoming an increasingly unlikely occurrence, you know, except for like a few anomalies here or there. I mean, you know, Deadpool. My guess would be that Deadpool is going to be fairly successful, um, but I mean, after that, you know, the the new Captain America movie. I don't know. No, I don't, I don't think know. so. Or Fantastic Four. I don't. I don't know how much like Fantastic Four would actually matter. You know, really to the average moviegoer. I don't know how much it would matter saying like, oh, well, it's the MCU now. I, I just don't see that necessarily being like a big selling point that will save them. I mean, really, what will save them is making a very, very, very good film. But and a lot of them really you know, like you know, the but like the floor has to be good. Like the quality yes. level has to be good at the bare minimum because you have a lot of mm -hmm. catching up to do in terms of like yeah. public perception and people's expectations for your own cinematic thing. And you also no longer have, you know, the MCU's incredible success to kind of help prop you up because of the, you know, the yeah. rising tide in a sense on superhero content was probably working in DC's advantage. Cause I don't think that many people really care about the technical difference between Marvel characters and DC characters when they go to see, you know, the movies to where it would, I don't think it would be a negative thing. Um, but now that they don't have that to help, you know, lean on, they got a lot of they have a lot working against them. They truly do. I was uh, thinking about how, you know, the average audience member seeing uh, Falcon as Captain America is going to be fucking weird. But the as much as that would probably be part of the reason why this movie won't do well, that he's not Chris Evans being that character because that's obviously mm. how they were built. I actually think that Chris Evans would have trouble drawing in um, everybody at this point I think as Captain so. America. I think so. And when you when you got that as a reality, it's like, yeah, fucking, how do you think anyone else is going to do in that role? Not even a recast, that's just... <laughs> it's one of their biggest challenges is that they now have to try and uh, attain the level of success that they had, mostly with characters who, you know, weren't responsible for it before. Either new characters or, you know, supporting characters that have now become the, the main characters. You know, Thunderbolts, right? That's mostly comprised of, of new people. How much is that going to be worth to the average viewer when so much of what they're thinking about with, oh yeah, good, the good MCU movies was before any of these characters even existed. That's going to be a fucking funny movie. Thunderbolts. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Best of luck with that one. Uh, what? Season 2 is out? I didn't even hear about this. No, most people didn't. Yeah. We were keeping an eye, most of course. Well, were unaware. And we've no updated on season three so far. It's the kind of show that you learn about when someone happens to make like a tweet talking about a meme about it, or maybe they said it's really dumb, and then that reminds you the show exists. Or they show like Not a screenshot from the show that's crazy, and you're like, wait, where is this from? Wait, was that in the first season? Yeah, Did yeah, this happen? Wait, what? <laughs> Did I miss this? Are we reminiscing about the first season? Um... Hey, Mola, I just heard about this, but are you guys going to talk about it, the Hello Future Me thing? I'm surprised you didn't take shots at EFAP 2. Hello Future Me thing? Who? What yeah, thing is that? What's that? Um, scrolling through my brain files, and I'm not... It might be something I've forgotten. I'm sorry if I'm misremembering something there, but I I can't help you with that one. I uh, can't did believe we're going to... Hmm? Yeah, I was about to say, uh, did he make like a video on... I don't know. 
Oh, that's the is it? He's the guy who um he did the Rings of Power video. Rings of oh. Power is a disappointment, and then he cut out that big section where he bitches about other YouTubers and gets their shit wrong. Yeah, I think he's like, going he, to regret. Yeah, he talks about like that. yeah, he like <laughs> he made a bunch of crazy shit about like random film talk and stuff like that. Well, yeah, you went after random film talking little platoon for being like you called them woke bros, <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> he's gone on, like I said, to regret and has since deleted that portion of his video. Uh, yeah, it's a bit awkward, but that was a whole event that just went past. He, he didn't go after uh, uh, good old EFAP. He, he didn't have a section for us. I was a little, uh, honestly, a little bit felt a little bit left out. I was like, come on, everyone else does it. No reason for you not to join the crew. But yet. Uh, I think next time well rings of power season two uh trailer is out by the time this comes out so excited can't wait to see what they're gonna do next it's such a wonderful wonderful franchise uh. oh, can't wait to see gandalf sauron yo get excited i am so excited for not definitely gandalf mm -hmm. and sauron and galadriel Ganadel. It will be so cool to see her swing her sword and frown. Yes. Very good at that. Um, I can't believe we're going to bully Pat into making a Fallout TV show review. Real shame. Oh. That's pretty funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was the one that ended up making a video for it, but hey. It happens. Uh, will ER regret this more or less than the boogie stream? I feel like that's going to be peak ER regret. Yeah. Beating that out is going to yeah, get tough. Yeah, no way. No way. <laughs> Gets dethroned. How does it feel to see all your favorite franchises go up in flames? It's that, Feels um, great, man. Feels great. Well, it's the... I feel like the new best response to that is the Conan O'Brien one. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fucking perfectly fine. fucking fine. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodshot eyes. <laughs> twitching <laughs> and shaking. Oh, it's so perfect because that's how it feels. Oh, does it feel? Everything's been destroyed. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just making room for other wonderful things to grow, you know? And ironically, that's what's like, happening. When you get a little flower that slightly starts to grow in the garden, like um, House of the Dragon or something, you're like, oh god, everyone, look, everyone protect it. <laughs> put yeah, everything. everyone, we put, we put the little basket around it, <laughs> the little chicken <laughs> wire around yeah. it so no one could get in. We do soil samples and we make sure all of the um like the, all the the water and nutrients we give it, we do like chemical tests on it. Bit more than anything else. Um It's like the little um it's like the little plant growing out of the shoe in Wally. Yeah. What's everyone's favorite Halo soundtrack, High Rags? Hello. Um Oh, Oh man. Uh probably between Oh, if it's a soundtrack, actually. Between... I was thinking of an individual song. I think my favorite is Halo 3, 3 and ODST. Like... I, I think the reason why I lean towards Halo 3 is because it's like a best of compilation, right? Like all of the all of your favorite hits from Halo 1 and 2, as well as a few new compositions for 3, like all together and very unified as well. Blood That's variety. probably why it leans towards it. Yeah. Um... But ODST has a great uh, soundtrack, like a great jazz inspired soundtrack, and, and, and Reach has a lot of awesome tracks. Yeah, it's actually kind of tough to pick. Um, there's a lot of stuff in. I know, like, I had the, the CD for the Halo 2 soundtrack, and it's got really good stuff in there. And of course, Three's got a whole host of bangers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's tough to choose. I'll probably say three probably for similar reasons but it's legitimately tough to choose if i listen to all the soundtracks again my answer might change but um halo obviously the first one set up a lot of really good you know themes and vibes and but those were just improved upon later and added to and extended um so it's not that you know halo was a bad soundtrack because it wasn't it was a good soundtrack they just took that and they did good stuff with it in the future yeah, I'd probably go for three, but I'm not choosing between many. Three Reach and Wars, I guess. <laughs> Halo Wars has got some good tracks. Um, Halo Wars has got some good tracks, for sure. It's, a, it's definitely show. a different... Uh, 
Halo TV, Halo so show. like it, it is genuinely stunning how uh, little music from the games has made it into the show. When I say little, I mean like less than two percent, maybe. Yeah, it's very rare that you hear anything. It's it's. I'm pretty sure. I am actually pretty sure that the only two tr the only two times that you hear the Halo music is in season one, episode nine, during the fight, uh, and it's got a really terrible mix. Uh, it sucks. Like it's a really shitty rendition of uh of that theme it's so muddied that you can barely even make out the uh make out the melody and then uh in season two episode one you briefly get the halo theme right before the big action scene up in the fog and i'm I'm pretty sure that's actually the only halo music that makes it into the show everything else is like new compositions and they're really boring well that entire first action sequence um with uh, it, it felt like they were compensating and trying to get yeah. ahead of issues. So the fact that the music played before then, there's something about it, it that feels like, yeah, it follows that they're trying to do. It just makes thing. me wonder if they had something else there and then someone said, J just do the, the, put the Halo theme in there, like just for a little bit. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll do that in like 10 minutes <laughs> and then just put it in there and that was it. This would be about the uh, characters getting ranked. CJ from GTA San Andreas off of Oh shit, here we go again. Alone should be ranked. He's, oh, uh, pretty iconic. <laughs> yeah, no denying it. Yeah, that's a that's a great line. There's so many great lines in uh dude Ten Penny. He says so many funny things. God damn, Ten Penny's funny. He shouldn't be on the list, but poor Sackboy deserves to be iconic. Uh, Sackboy so is great. I really like Sackboy. I don't Super know about how iconic he is, though. Super fun, he's, creative he ain't games top that 20. brought user creation on consoles to a new level. Yeah, yeah. Little Big Planet um, had a, like an immense amount that you could do with the tools, and only ever got better and better with the sequels. I think Sackboy's a really cool character, like a really cool design for a character. I remember even when Little Big Planet was coming out. You know how like Xbox, like the new Xbox experience or whatever it was called, and they had the avatars. I remember at the time I was thinking mm -hmm. like. You know, PlayStation, you could do that with, like, the Sackboys. That feels, that feels like an idea worth considering, because the Sackboys are, like, super customizable. Mm. But, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's just a matter of, like, if you were to ask about iconic characters ten years ago, then it feels like Sackboys got more of a chance, but now, you know, so long since the heyday of Little Big Planet. Yeah. Yeah, making the list. But I, th I think he's cool. I really like Sackboys. Charming. Uh, Fringy, can you do your iconic victory dance for five pooch points? I've been sitting on these for too long and I need to use them. Oh yeah, you yeah, ca yeah he's cashing those in, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it. There it is. Yeah, I'm doing the dance. I did a flip. There you go. Oh my five goodness. Five points, nice. Also, Heil Rags and Moob. Hello. Heil. Cheers, gentlemen. Praise be to the dawn. Mole, I've been rewatching old EFAPs. Always hear the Zippo, lol. Stop smoking, dope. I don't smoke. I just like the zipper layer. Yeah, only when I'm on fire. It sounds Which isn't often. cool. I was led to believe that I'd be catching fire far more often as a child with exactly. how much they stress stop, drop, and roll. I thought that would be a regular issue that I'd have to worry about, but uh, I haven't caught on fire once. They lied, damn it. <laughs> Maybe it's because they prepared me. All this training, you know? Makes sense. Uh, ba ba da ba by the way, Metroid came out before Lara Croft. Oh yeah, Metroid. Yeah, Metroid, the original Metroid, came out like a decade before Tomb Raider. I think that should surprise many people. Unless, of course, they only know about it through like Prime and stuff. Metroid Prime. But I mean, even, you know, Super Metroid came out before uh, Tomb Raider as well, so... You know. I think as years go by, you know, people's references and sort of frames of... Know, perspective in terms of what came out when and what games you're sort of quote unquote expected to have played, that's just going to shift over time. Yeah. I mean, because for us, you know, the idea that you didn't play like Bioshock or the Mass Effect games or the God of War games, like those were, those are kind of ones that you were generally going to be expected to play, uh, you know, the big, you know, big console titles in particular. And now you get into, you know, every year away, you know, that, that we, you know, that we move. The amount of people who've played stuff like the Mass Effect trilogy and just get smaller and smaller. Probably. No, I know it's fascinating to think about, isn't it? Yeah, true. Yeah. And They're someone says like, "I played shit tons of uh, Xbox 360 with a bunch of friends." You're sitting there like, "So, 
Did you get the full package, or did you mainly focus on COD, or Halo, or Gears of War? It's going to be one of them. <laughs> Well, I find it funny at this point that people could be nostalgic for, like, Black Ops 3. Like, oh, yeah, remember Black Ops 3? <laughs> like, uh, the good old okay. days. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I seem to recall only Rags doing his iconic Gwimbly victory dance last stream. What say you, Mauler and Fringy? Yeah, we can I do did, our victory we, dances. I just did it. Yeah. I'll do it again. Yeah, I'm doing it. See? I did a flip. I'll do it for you every time, if you ask, because we want. Uh, look up Final Fantasy 3 enemy, the Sea Lion. Final Fantasy 3 Sea Lion. Images. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, let me, uh, let me get you the pixel version. It is, uh, it's a sea lion. <laughs> uh. Look at him go. It's, you know, I yeah, like him. Great. Neat. I like him too. Wouldn't want to run into him in a dark alley. Yeah. I recently played Reach for the first time with a friend. I can't wait to completely ignore this retarded show. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah. it's easier to ignore it because the constituency it is completely well, imagine separate. The imagine the people who watch the show and then they play Halo Reach. Yeah. Like, damn. That'll be a shift. Hi, I'm gay American Ben Franklin, inventor of gay instruments. Wow. Hmm. Wow. I guess they're a fan of the show. Cool. Uh, in Haunting in Venice, is it explained how Joyce channels the girl's voice? No, like, we don't get any kind of reasoning for that beyond what you can just assume, which is that she's able to, you know, alter her voice. Or so you see her yeah. doing the wailing and stuff, the idea that she could do a kid's voice. Not too far out of the realm of what's possible for a lot of people, especially if they believe they're channeling, you know? Um, and then as for, like, it, it being one-to-one -one with the actual girl, I'd imagine at that point it's more so just what the, uh, the mum was hearing, especially with all the pressures on her at that point. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. What phobias do each of you have? Mine are arachnophobia and thalassophobia, the latter making games like Subnautica particularly hard to play. Uh, yeah, I'll be boring. I don't like spiders. Don't like them. Um, I feel like I, I dislike them so much that I'd feel more comfortable near a snake than a spider, even though a snake poses more of a danger to me than a spider. I think the snakes aren't like scary in a way that a spider is are just like really creepy. That, uh, yeah, they have a face, which helps a lot. Whereas, and then a spider be like, "Why well, have a face? Look at my eight Horrifying eyes." Horrifying face. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For me, it's spiders. Um. Even to the point where something brushes past me. Um. In a way that my brain registers that as probably a spider, then I can be like, "Wah!" Yeah, like, get it off me straight away. <laughs> even though it's like, "You'll be fine." It's like, "Don't care." <laughs> I don't care that I'll be fine. I don't want them near me. Don't like them. I would for, say um... that my fears. I mean, you've got all the normal stuff. Um, somewhat afraid of, um, like little just creepy crawly stuff. Like, uh, uh, but it's more of a just like a disgust than it is a like a fear. Um, but I would say that um, I am afraid of. It really, really gives me the EBGBs. When you have deep water and you have stuff that you can see like poking up in the water and you can barely see the tip of it. So it could be like an old dead tree or like branches of this old dead tree that's been covered up and you could kind of see the, the like the, the branches sticking up in the uh, it's, it's all underwater still, but you can look down and see it and then it just sort of disappears into the into the depths below it. That kind of stuff kind of creeps me out um like you, you that's just thinking about what might be down there um so that, that that's just like a, a sort of fear of mine i don't like you know even in video games sometimes when i see it and i'm like ooh, that's this creepy you know and i have to like push myself to delve in if i have to for the game yeah fair um i think uh Complete darkness in places I'm very f unfamiliar with can be pretty scary as well. I don't, that doesn't happen to me very often, but I don't imagine I would deal well with it. And then, 
claustrophobia, but like, I think only if I knew I'm trapped. And then I wonder if that's just uh, fear of the fact that I'm going to die in general. Well, I will say, like, the idea of going down into, like, spelunking, going into one of those caves where people, like, go in and they have to crawl through those narrow spaces, no way. No way. Absolutely not. Mm. Like, that nutty putty thing, n no way. Uh, look up the thumbnail for Oni Plays Little Nightmares. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the melty face of Chris. Look oh my at goodness. his melty oh, no. face. That's amazing. <laughs> and then psychic pebbles there. <laughs> Love it. Uh, farewell and adieu to you fair Flemish massives. Farewell and adieu to you massives of Fleam. Little musical notes as well. You have oh, Flemish hands, Mr. Massives. You've been counting grumbos all your life. I think we've oh, not all my life, but you know. I, I guess they're, they're exaggerating a little bit, but you know. Yeah. Um, oh, it's this one again. I agree with Fringy. Breast reductions violate the Hippocratic Oath. Why do you keep what's what's going on there? All right. Yes, that's just someone you said at some point. They agree with it. I don't know. I don't recall that at all. I I feel like I have no opinion mm. on on those topics. More regarding the cringe casting, if Lord of the Rings can't believe you didn't cast him as cringe Aragorn, Orlando Bloom. Cringe Aragorn, Orlando Bloom? I guess so. That would be a little cringe. Certainly wouldn't be as good as Vigo. No, all agree nah. on that. Yep. He's just not as good as an actor. <laughs> no, nope. Well said. Uh, just, just doesn't Remember have the green book? Remember I Vigo do. and that? Yeah, he was great. He was. He was very good. That was a good movie. I didn't appreciate people saying that it wasn't worthy of, you know, being nominated for Best Picture. Well, I, I, I don't know. What was the vibe? Like, everyone was like, such a, I think like everybody was, it was too, it was too straightforward. Like, it wasn't an, it was a very conventional, you know, film of like, yeah, racism's bad. And these two guys go on an adventure and they realize, you know, that they're good friends and, and race doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get in the way. Like, it's a very... It, it definitely, when I was watching, I was like, man, this does feel like a 2000s movie. Yeah. <laughs> if it was very much of that era. But it's a good movie. It's good. I, I don't know what people would be saying for, like, what's wrong with it. That's the main thing. For the reason why I think it's like, yeah, it's worthwhile that that film gets nominated for Best Picture. Whether or not it was the best film of the year, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe not, but still. What did, uh, I'll be right back. What lost that year? Do you remember? Just what year was that? Uh, I think that was 2018. So let me let me see, because I'm curious. Because yeah, maybe maybe it's not the best movie of the year. Maybe, but I mean, I I don't know. It feels like people were acting like it wasn't even worth like worthy of being nominated, which felt mm -hmm. unfair. Uh, so it beat out Black Panther, uh, Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody. Mm. Roma, A Star Is Born, Vice, The Favorite, and Black K Klansman. Interesting. Okay. So there's yeah. arguments to be made, you know. Uh, well, I mean, I would. I think A Star Is Born is better than Green Book. <laughs> I, I think so I too. I would prefer that one winning over that. Obviously, Black Panther shouldn't have even been nominated. Um, and I haven't seen actually any of the other films. I know that Bohemian Rhapsody was one that people were like the people fought over whether or not that was a good movie or not. I think it wasn't more hated than liked. Uh, I got well. I know it was very successful. Yeah, like it nearly made a billion dollars, so it was very successful. But that it was um, I remember it was the editing right? There was that clip that went around yeah, where the was... editing was like insane, but it was nominated for best editing. <laughs> Don't know how that happened exactly. Yeah. Look who it is, the villain in glasses. Not sure what they mean by that. Uh, mm. I was listening to an old EFAB and discovered something amusing in EFAB 13 at 2930. Mola jokes about the Force and how anyone can use it. Dude, when the stormtroopers turn up to burn uncle and aunt in their place, they both just pulled out lightsabers, used the Force, and battered the entire Empire because everyone can. Uh, yeah, that was because of Broom Boy. It's like, you can't establish that basically anybody can use the force proficiently because it's like the world would just be so much different than it currently is it can't work that way is what we've seen there'd be way more force users force use would be common 
Yeah, the um, and it's kind of an element that I wish we would see more every once in a while. It'd be rare, but the idea of every once in a while you bump into someone who is force sensitive and they sort of just like discover that somehow, but they don't have anyone to train them. They don't have any technique. So it's all self-taught and they could do basic stuff. Um, you'll, you'll run into the bounty hunter who could do simple pushes and pulls. Um, but they don't like know how to hone that skill. They don't know the techniques of training that the Jedi have. So it's very rudimentary and it's super useful, but it's just very rudimentary and basic. They don't know how to guard their mind against force this, force that. They don't know how to, like, tap into the lightsaber stuff. They don't, but it's just a thing that they have. Um, and it could be cool to see that as an element of world building when you don't have big organizations like the Jedi to sort of, you know, scoop up these people and, and, and train them. But it's always like, oh, someone's force sensitive, so they're gonna use a lightsaber now, and they're gonna be a Skywalker, and they're gonna be a da da da. So eh. it would be kind of cool if there was a magician who worked in the universe, was quite popular, but that was using the force to make everything work just a bit better. But uh, obviously tried to hide it too, even uh, kind of fucking up on purpose to make sure that it doesn't get discovered. Well, you could you could do something like that with. Um... Like, imagine a good version of TLJ, so another movie entirely, where they go to the gambling place, and there's a guy there who's insanely good at gambling, and Luck's just always on his side, and he knows when to hold him and fold him and walk away, but he could, he has just a little bit of telekinesis with a force, and he can influence the dice rolls just a little bit, and he's using it to make a lot of money gambling. Um, or maybe he's a, he's a guy who owns the gambling establishment, and whenever someone was winning too much, he goes over there and he influences the dice to be bad rolls. Uh, little bitty stuff like that that you could really play into with Star Wars that's just hinting at the Force a bit, that some people out there have it, without being a whole, oh, prophecy, dyad, Skywalker, Palpatine, lightsaber fight. You're like, no, no, it's, it, it's, it's beyond that. You know, it, it, I'm... We know it's out there, so but we never play into that aspect of it. It has to be, like, the Force doesn't need to be the defining characteristic of somebody. It could just be a thing that they have, and maybe they don't think much of it. Maybe they're like, yeah, I, I guess I can. You know, I don't think about it too much. I piddle around with it. I do a little practice here and there, but I'm not a Jedi. I'm not interested in being a Jedi. I'm not interested in learning the ways of the whatever it is. That I, like, I'm, just, I'm doing my own thing, you know, and it's just... One of those little elements that make me who I am. And it's useful and it's neat, but I don't think anything more of it than that. You're living in a dream world. But a dream world would be nice. Instead of what we got. Is it too late for Star Wars? Perhaps. No, it isn't <laughs> too late. Uh, but, it feel, <laughs> but it feels like it's too late. I mean, we're, we're answering this like... <laughs> Acolyte's gonna be out soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, it feels like there's no hope, but you gotta have a little bit, you know? There's no bit. reason someone can't just come in and make a fucking banger I mean, Star we Wars. Movie. Angle, you know? Like, so, yeah. you, someone can just come in, a group of people really talented and motivated with an idea in mind for their story coming along and making a great film, a uh, great show against all odds. I work with a rhino at a zoo. Hit me up for that forbidden milk. Keep up the awesome work, massives. Three, four, three sucks. Chiefs cheeks, and then blur. Look, I'm gonna be honest, man. If you, I don't know if it's like contraband or something, but if you're able to secure rhino milk, then like the meme potential is gold. Uh, Kiki Wolfkill was a producer and self-acclaimed fan of Halo and helped with the story and script writing and was a part of 343. Microsoft and these executives have a serious problem of hiring fake fans. Yep. Um, I mean, I remember it was uh, one of the, kind of one of the early, like, wow quotes in relation to, you know, the destruction of franchises. We got, we hired people who hated Halo. Why would I? Like, why the fuck would you do that? Are you why retarded? Would you do that? Why would you say that? It, it was just, um, it was that time when basically everybody wanted to be Call of Duty and do what Call of Duty did. And it was like, well, we're trying something new. We're innovative. We're pushing it forward. I remember, was, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, people may think that they want, you know, Halo to stay the same, but that's not what they really want. 
Um, they want something that, you know, speaks to the things that they love, but gives them something new, which I love. I love, like, the corporate speak in there. Speaks to what they love. What does that mean? What does that mean? And how can you even say that when you've changed the game so radically that it, it, it it's, like, a very different um, experience in terms of the core game, especially in the multiplayer for Halo 4 and 5. Felt like Infinite was getting closer to being more like what it would look like if you were much more incrementally trying new things with the Halo formula. But yeah, they I don't know. It's uh they were very uh they were very sure of themselves with Halo 4 and Halo 5. Very sure. Which isn't even surprising. Like the game game journals blew a lot of smoke up their ass for Halo 4. I remember that there was some guy guy saying that Halo 4 was the best Halo game. Well, that's just their opinion. Yeah, okay. it's it's just so funny because it's not even like Halo Four started with a good reception. Like Halo Four, particularly in the out of the gate, was very contentious. Well. Yeah, I mean that game died like in three months. It went from like having a massive launch to it's like oh maybe three or four thousand people playing the game at at one time. Hey, why haven't you guys played Lethal Company? Get the Among Us group and try it out. In fact, when's the last time you all had an EFAP gaming? I would like to do... I want to do Champed Up again. Uh, Champed Up is, yeah. I'd really really like itching for up. that. Uh, we, I suppose we'll try and get it sorted out once we uh, get back to being fully caught up with Super Chats, which, uh, you know what? We're getting there. We're getting there. EFAP gaming is on the horizon. I am certain of it. Certain. To be soon. Uh, it pains me as a fan of this franchise only to see it crumble in the dust thanks to crappy management because this stuff reminds me of the Bureau of Ordnance fuck up in the MK-14 torpedoes during World War II. Hmm. Interesting uh, way to compare it. Franchise destruction. Uh, yes, lots of Halo fans are very sad. Current state. Yep. I wonder if there's like a subreddit for the season that came out and I wonder how populated it is. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess, uh, I guess when the Fall of Reach came out, generally people were happy with that, but it seems like as the series went on, it, it deteriorated, even though, as, you know, as far as I'm concerned, episode four, that was, that might be the worst episode of the entire show. Yeah. I think, I think it was frustrating that that, that could be viewed as, as being like a great episode of, of like a Halo TV show. That's what was wanted when really like the full of reach, that's like a whole season of story right there. Well, that's a whole it's, season. It's a whole video game. We know yeah, that. exactly. It was a whole video game. And for it to essentially boil down to a battle that took place over the course of one night and we're done moving on to, well, we got to deal with, with Oni. I, do, I just, I find it really remarkable how um, opposed the writers of the show seem to be to having the Covenant be the one and only antagonistic force in the show. To where, I think it's safe to say that in season one and two, humans, like the UNSC, Oni, Halsey, Parangoski, Ackerson, they are more prominent antagonistic elements than the Covenant. The Covenant just show up every three yeah. episodes to be shot at. To and the that's point where we are even asking in season two, does humanity at large know that the Covenant exists? Yeah. Yeah, which is which is just a crazy way to have... Uh, that's just a crazy... That's nuts. That, that it's, it is nuts. That it's to the point that um, you're watching the show and you're wondering... So, okay, so like, this is supposed to be an existential threat to humanity, but nobody's acting like it is. Not even John Halo is, and this, this is his life. This is all he does. Well, I know this is off topic, but if the Force in the Star Wars is all-encompassing entity, why hasn't anyone, to my knowledge, used it to snap spines? That's uh, one of the problems that Star Wars faces all the time, is Force users not using the Force. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> annoying constant. To the point where uh, we've had to, as fans, sort of assume when two Force using you know, Jedi, Sith, whatever, fight each other, that they cancel each other out in a sense. That's why they're not really using it. Like, yeah. They have like an almost force shield or something that they wouldn't bother trying it. But uh, no, it's, it's not um, fabulous. Because mm. I have, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've considered like if I'm going to make some sort of a fantasy world or anything like that, do I have it be to where like the, the, 
do living things have some sort of a life force or energy that repels magic like intrinsically so you can't just pick them up like a, a rag doll and throw them or crush their spine or something you have to use external things and throw stuff at them or maybe man manipulate their their gear or clothing or something like that so you don't have to you know, so you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. It's something you kind of have to think about a little bit, or you have to embrace it. Um, the the Aragon books, they talk about uh, how you're wasting you're wasting a lot of energy and focus by trying to like pick up rocks and throw them at people, or make fireballs or lightning or any of that nonsense. In order to kill someone, you don't really have to do much to them if you know where in the body you can close a throat or snap a nerve or break a neck or or something like that, some little tiny things that you could do to the, you know, the anatomy of a human body. Because um, that, that goes the route of, um, those books go the route of how people who use magic, especially, you know, an offensive capability, they're like super glass cannon -y, where battles might come down to armies dedicated to just protecting the mages so that the mages can do all their spell casting. Um, Ooh, like how uh, like how Darkseid didn't with his mages in his big fight. Remember they went out like and just got killed. They had like the mother boxes. Remember yeah. those? Remember those guys? Yeah, they just went out and got fucking killed. Good, good uh, what a good genius! Stuff. What a battle really genius good, that uh, man was. It's why in Star Wars, I it's 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 stupid that you just have Jedi at the front of the battle just running towards the enemy with this bright glowing shoot me stick. <laughs> Um, when obviously you just you would not use a Jedi and all of their abilities as like a frontline combatant because that's just stupid. Yeah, and uh, the films are victims of this. Like uh, when Obi Wan fights Django, there's just no reason he's to not use the Force, but he just doesn't because obviously he'd win. I think he uses it to open the door later. Yeah, it's like bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kinesis. Looks like it would have. Uh... It'd be really good. Come in handy there. Rise it on Anakin in their big fight. Makes you think. Makes you think. Big ponder. Kind of difficult to solve thinking about it too, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is. Because if you make future stuff, you can't exactly. Because I think everyone would be pissed if you said there's some kind of automatic shield that prevents that. Because there's so many instances of that not being the case. It's just like, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? You have sort of written yourself into this bizarre... Like, what? what's the state of this mechanic? Yeah. But hey, plenty of fun to be had regardless. Hooray. Uh, the show should have been like the Pacific or Band of Brothers. That's what this show should have been. But no Microsoft and 343, no Jackal. I mean, I think Halo yeah, I mean, can work for multiple you, seasons. It's just, you know, let's be absolutely. good. Absolutely. But I, you do think about that. Could you imagine, like, it's just a show about ODSTs, but it's like Band of Brothers where you get to see them over the course of a lengthy campaign. And, and you just have, like, this massive group of, of characters with different yeah, parts, really cool. different temperaments. It, it could be so awesome. And, I mean, they would have had a comparable budget to Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers was... Uh, you know, yeah. one of the most, I think it was the most expensive TV show at the time of its release. Um, but that was in an era when you didn't have as many, um, I guess, prestige television shows that had the amount of budget that they have now. But Halo had a nine figure budget, so it would have been comparable. I know it's sci fi, but still, could you imagine? Could have been great. Nine figure budget, you have to no, IQ writing staff. <laughs> My friend said the show was good, and now I question their judgment on everything. As a fan of the law, this show depresses me. I mean, yeah, it's worth, you know, thinking about it when any recommendation comes from anybody. It's funny when someone says, like, this is the first time I've disagreed with EFAP. I'm like, well, that's a you problem. <laughs> that is a you problem, because quite yeah. frankly, like, not to toot our own horn, but we're just, like, really fucking right all the time. <laughs> That's like, not the way really... I was going with that direction. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I figured you were going in the direction of it, you probably should end up disagreeing more than just once. So considering I have disagreed with my own takes, like, you know, yeah. as time goes on several times, I feel like, right. you know. You're both right. Yeah. You're right sense. both times. I was just more right in another time, that's all. Well, yeah, it's it's um because something that's uh always part of the equation, it's kind of like the nature of what we try to do here is to, it's to do our best to be aware of and in a sense mitigate our biases 
in terms of the way that they inform uh, the approach to dissecting and analyzing stories. But I mean, it's it's always there. It's going to be a factor, and it's going to be a factor for you as well, and influence what kind of stories you like. Yeah. Um, just be aware of the recommendations, sources, tastes, and if they match up a lot with you, then that's going to be a good bet, but not a sure bet. Never a sure bet. You never know. Yeah. Um, it would be interesting to watch movies now that we did many years ago just to see you know it, it happens as you know for me re-watching movies noticing things i didn't notice before as your your perspective changes as you you know soak up knowledge from the people around you and you know your process you know shifts a bit and gets better and more refined it's uh you know it's a it's interesting very interesting much a process and that's okay in fact, it's yeah, beautiful. But you should agree with us all the time. Absolutely, every time. If you don't, something's gone wrong. There's a glitch in the matrix. Um, my coworker is a Mando fan. They liked Black Panther, etc. Prime consumer type, and even he called Halo a dirty bait and switch. That's bad. Oh. Mm. Interesting. This one just says, Woke Bros Unite. Of course, Team Woke, Woke Bros. Bros Unite. Hello, fellas. I commented about Project X-Ray. Wanted to let you know that I am now writing a script inspired by the event. Glad you guys enjoyed. Huh. Yeah, I mean, best of luck. Sounds like fun. Halo as a franchise has been ruined even worse than Star Wars. Halo 4 and 5 are the equivalent of TLJ with how they destroyed the lore and characters, and Halo Infinite is the Tross equivalent. Um, really? I didn't know Infinite was that bad. I can't speak to it. I mean, that's a more of a fringy thing, I think. Did he complete think so. Infinite? As far as I know, he started but didn't finish? We'll, uh, that's my understanding. We'll read that out again once he's, uh, once he's back. My uh, uh, thoughts on humanity being the precursors. Oh, I should probably wait for that one as well, should I? Oh. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Rags of Fringy, last main Yo. channel. Oh, wait, that's another one I'm going to have to wait for. God damn it, he chose, like, the worst time ever to meet. Wow, Fringy. Uh, let me guess. The full runners were... No, I'm going to save that one. Uh, there's one about animation. Should probably wait for Fringy. When they were introduced, Palutina in Smash Bros, they showed an animated clip of Link fighting Pit. It looked amazing. An animated Zelda movie like that is what I want. Yeah, but you want it to be good, though. That's the that's the main thing, right? Even if they did announce an animated Zelda, which would be fun and everything, it's like, who's writing it? Yeah, I hope that script's good, but I would certainly agree that, um, it, you know, presented with live action or animated, I would always prefer an animated Zelda movie. There you I mean, go. I feel like everybody's pointed out, yeah, animated Studio Ghibli style is kind of what you imagine, or if not that, like a 3D painterly style, something like that. So uh, uh, one of the, th the things we just got here was the notion that Halo 4 and 5 are TLJ while Infinite is Tross. What do you think, Fringy? Uh, I don't know if I'd call Infinite Tross, because Halo Infinite is probably, of the three games, it's the one that I probably view the most favorably. Oh, shit, do I? Um, hmm. I, I always said that Halo 5, specifically the campaign, was like a TLJ before TLJ, uh, which I do feel that way. Infinite's more complicated because there are a lot of things about Infinite that I like uh, in terms of its core. But the multiplayer uh, lets you down and the campaign is also... I, did, I didn't finish it because I wasn't enjoying it that much. It feels... Uh, in a sense, it feels kind of like half-baked. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know if they directly are analogous to, to Star Wars in terms of the nature of what they get right and what they get wrong. Yeah, fair enough. Halo is an allegory for Yugoslavia in which Master Chief Josef Broz Tito fights an antagonist called the Covenant, Croats, and weird religious beliefs, Catholicism. Interesting. You know what? That's the beauty of art. You can see whatever you want to see. Thoughts on humanity being the precursors? Uh, I don't... Uh, it's the humans were forerunners. That's it. I don't, I don't care about it. Is that it's basic, yeah. yeah, it's like it's basically. I don't see how it isn't just confirmed from 
the original, you know, Halo games, that that was the obvious thing that was going on. The only thing you have in Halo 3 is the terminals, but as far as I'm concerned, the easiest way to square away is like, sure, there's a contradiction, but what are you going to look at? The main story and what is said explicitly in the main story or what's said in the terminals? You know, Guilty Spark calls Chief a forerunner. I, you know, I don't know how much more explicit it gets than that. What's the cope for that, then? You are Forerunner. The cope is that the uh, the Halo 3 terminals lean more towards the idea that humans and Forerunners were not the same. That's, like, all you've got in the Halo stuff, and in, in the Bungie Halo stuff, but then 343, like, outright changes it completely to where humans and Forerunners are very much not the same. That's kind of really the main source of the cope, <laughs> is 343. I see because I mean, I know that it's I know that it doesn't count because it's not you know it's not canon like it didn't make it in. But the original ending for Halo Two uh, included the Arbiter. The Ark was on Earth, um, and that Arbiter would find a human skeleton within the Ark, which would be basically the the clearest, most explicit confirmation that humans were forerunners. That was always that was always the original intention. Um, and so in Halo 3, you don't get it as much, but I mean, again, he literally calls Chief a forerunner. Yes, he says, li- and, Gil- and Guilty Spark would know. Guilty Spark would, would know. <laughs> Not only would he know, he would have an investment in Chief And, knowing, and it's just that, um, too. before 343, you didn't have any of the mantle of responsibility stuff. There was no, like, cosmic destiny for humans to inherit, um, like a mantle that the the forerunners had of being custodians of the universe. That was that was just not part of the the bungee canon. It, 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 I mean, really, it's 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 unlucky for humans. It's not very good to be able to use Halo. It's it's entirely against humanity's interest to use it. It's only in Halo Three that they actually can for the first time. Let me guess. The forerunners were humans, so the show thinks all humans have ancient alien magic mind powers because space no, but they don't. equals magic. They don't. It's only Chief... Uh, sorry, my bad. John Halo and, uh, and McKee, they're the special ones. Other humans can't use forerunner stuff, so it's even worse than that. Because now it just adds a whole bunch of coincidences and contrivances and insane cosmic prophecy on top. It's, it's a change for the worst. It, it seriously hurts the writing of the show. Um, that's the Fallout show. It has great props copied from Bethesda and Black Isle Obsidian eras. They have the 10mm pistol based on the OG game modeled perfectly, but the writing is just... man. When did that come out? Was it out by the time we were doing that episode? I guess it was. Feels weird. Now for a bit. We'll give him Fringy, he knows not what he said. Wait, sorry, what? I said, forgive him, Fringy, he knows not what he said. I think they're talking about ER. That's my assumption anyway. I don't oh, know. oh, okay. <laughs> Rags and Fringy, last main channel Ooh. videos, November and October 22. EFAP is very time-consuming, yet I wish you both spent more time growing your own brands with love. You know what? That is totally fair, and I agree. Um, hopefully I can get back to that soon. I have been working on stuff. Things have kind of calmed and settled down here. I've got four... Four things that I'm, I, I've been saving stuff. I do have things that I uh, feel motivated to do and have been doing and working on, as well as one big project. Um, but I'm going to try and knock out some of the smaller, medium-sized stuff first before I um, get the big thing out. Because it's not like most of the content I put out, but I think it'll be really good in the end. And I'm pretty, no, I'm quite proud of actually what I've been able to do so far in terms of editing, but that's very far along. So, you are right. Um, I do need to do more stuff, and stuff will be out soonish. But thank you very much uh, for, you know, the message. I, I appreciate that. Hey, look, right. you know the deal. Editing dungeon, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Editing what's funny with right, but... bringing it is that this person said, like, EFAP could be time-consuming, but, you know, is the, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know that Friggy's doing more than a weekly episode where he appears live for anywhere between oh, yeah, four and eight um... hours or whatever. He's, uh... What's well, it's uh main thing I would say is like I yeah like it would be you know I I want to I want to you know get videos out on the main channel but I am working you know like I'm always working and there's lots of stuff that's been made so I'm not feeling particularly on you know unproductive in terms of getting things done whole bunch of EFAP TVs and movies and uh and and helping noobs with the mainline videos and yeah, uh, a couple very, of cartoons uh, as well on uh, uh-huh. Dubious Sanity we got a, I made a couple of cartoons. 
want to keep making more. There is no lack of, of motivation in terms of creating. I really enjoy doing it. So, you know. But well, hey, just, time, right? <laughs> it's just time. For the record, in case anyone can't read descriptions, which I admit many people don't read them, and that's totally fine. Uh, all of the Halo TV, EFAP TV episodes, they're all fully edited by Fringy. And I can't even say, well, you, you, you wasn't, you, you, the recording was, it's like, no, he's in those two. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's all, <laughs> he was there for everything. So, you know, it's just like, that's it's, uh, a lot of work's going down. And yes, um, I do ensnare him into uh, editing here and there, like the, uh soka video and um well you'll see i suppose mm -hmm. who knows what's coming in the future speaking of preferring animation i prefer the supposed live action zelda movie to be animated oh, so, uh, yep fair enough. i would too uh we you will find uh amongst the efap crew we love animation i wish there was more animation i love the styles i love the things you could do with it I love just the characteristics of all sorts of different types of animation. And animation makes a lot of things, quite frankly, possible that you probably can't really necessarily pull off in the same way with live action. Um, we have discussed it on the Halo coverage, how the Halo show should have been animated. It should have, should have yeah, been animated. Have been. Um, because you see, especially with budgets and what you can and cannot do, um, like, can you... Uh, arcane. I was like, Arcane. I can't imagine that as like a live action show being able to get away with all the stuff that happens in it. It would have been, it wouldn't have been the same and it would have been tough for me to, you know, imagine it better as a live action show. Um, but I, we're big proponents of animation and I love it. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite, like weird things that got said about us that had some level of traction was like, EFAP typically hate animations. Like, yeah, that's insane. It was a wild one. <laughs> if anything, I, I personally have a bias in favor of animation, like, I, more so than the average person. I mean, most of your references to media come from non-animated shows, I've noticed, so it's easy to make that mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Which part is when John Halo is flying through space in his underwear while slicing through Covenant ships with a plasma sword, just like in Luke and TLJ? Uh, season 3, I think. Coming. That'd be great. <laughs> So everyone will share on YouTube and be like, this is it. They finally cracked the spirit of Halo. Finally, we can enjoy it without shame. A shilling for the Halo shoddiness meter. Thank you for watching, so I don't have to. Better luck with the next one. So, how about that Fallout adaptation? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, how about it? I, uh, how, how about, how about it, it? How, how about, about it? that? Hmm. Oh, boy. Everyone's favorite. Boy, I sure do love <laughs> Fallout. Actual Justice Warrior and Drew Gooden on EFAP when? I don't know. Whenever they want. If we've got some right. things that match to the kind of things they want to cover. We are a welcoming sort here. Uh, they probably omitted Johnson because they're scared of Twitter comparing him to Lincoln Osiris. Problematic stereotypes means fun characters are a no-go. You mean the fucking Tropic Thunder character? Sergeant Lincoln Osiris. <laughs> I don't um, know why they would compare... He's like a full-on character. Why would they compare him to that? I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, there, there really is like no logical reason to me why Sergeant Johnson wouldn't be part of the adaptation when he is arguably... You know, in terms of... If you were to rank characters in the Halo series by like their importance in the Halo trilogy, it'd be like Chief, Cortana, Arbiter, then him. Like he, he's, he's not... one of the most important characters in the story. He's not only super important, he's like arguably the fan favorite. It is tough yeah, to imagine. Likeable. Oh yeah, the, he's just super likable. He's got a great personality. He's go get it gung ho. He has funny lines. He's a no nonsense guy. He's got the big mustache, the cigar. He's just got <laughs> that. He's got that energy. You know, is he inspired by um, Apon from Aliens? I'd say, very, yeah, I'd say so. I would definitely. Yeah, I would wager he is. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, because I was gonna say, yeah, the only thing that can, can be come up with with this is that it's a key they're handing, they're holding onto. They're like, we're gonna pull this one. Uh... Put off, they will. I think. I think maybe the the clearest reason I could see for why they didn't want to have Johnson is because the show is very self serious. It's very like we're doing a serious story, and we can't have Johnson around, who is, I would say, the main source of comic relief. Uh, but but it, it's a difference in tone. The Halo trilogy is um. 
it's campy at times. It's it's uh it's definitely trying to have fun. And um the Halo show is so up its own ass uh about being serious and lofty and having all of these oh look at our grand statements about the nature of humanity that they might have just said, nah, he he won't fit our tone. And he maybe he wouldn't have, you know, for what yeah, they maybe that's do. a good fucking thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Their lame version of Sergeant Johnson, you know? Yeah, it's true. Uh, Arbiter versus Forge Halo Wars, you're welcome. I think this the pointing out a better boss. Oh fight, yeah, which, the, yeah, yeah, the fight, yeah. I watched season one and almost finished season two just to hear this coverage. Why do you dumbos make me do this? Well, tit for tat, you can play DDLC. Maybe someday. But I'm, uh... I mean, we try to make it so you don't have to. That's kind of the point, you know. We want to make it so that you uh, don't have to waste any time. We can give you all the context, which I think we definitely sorted, you know? So, um, don't punish yourself too hard, you know? We have the best coverage, probably, on the internet, I would say. Favorite Pokemon video game and why? Also, hi, Frongo. Hey, um... Hmm. Gold version, I guess? Because that's the one... I haven't played that many. Um, I played Yellow. That was the first one I had. Um, I got Gold version, and I played that a bunch. And I think... For, there was, then there was a huge gap. Then I played, like, as on an emulator, on my laptop, I played Leaf Green which was like a redux or remake of the original. Mm -hmm. And I think I played one on DS. Was it Sword or Shield? I don't know. I played one on the DS, and it was like, it was fine. Diamond, maybe? Diamond or uh, Pearl? Maybe. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not certain, but it really didn't uh, grab okay. me. And I think the reason is just because I, please don't take this the wrong way, but I think I just sort of grew up. Um, and so the Pokemon oh. games, they just didn't, they just really didn't grab me or capture me. I was like, man, this is actually quite boring <laughs> you know i feel like i'm just doing the same thing over and over it's way too simplistic um it's just not yeah i just think i outgrew it um especially when we live in a world where we have games like like stardew valley and stuff like that if i'm gonna play like a a chill sort of game where you collect stuff and do tasks and do checklists and things i just feel like you have way better options these days for that i mean similar story i really liked emerald but yeah, yeah, same here. Eventually it's like, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> you know, it didn't take too long. Yeah, uh, best memories I have are of gold and me getting ho -Oh while my sister got a Lugia. Just, uh, yeah, just beating that campaign, entertaining at the time. But uh, it's difficult to return to Pokemon. So you know, I, I played Black when it came out on a DS and uh, I remember just being like, I'm kind of bored. I'd rather play something else. Mm -hmm. My number one favorite gaming moment was at the end of Halo Reach when you fought to the death. These jokers would enact that scene by having Marquis show up in her flat top just to de de-pants you and then die. Um, I mean, it's funny, right? Halo Reach, I feel like, if they even came, let's say, 55% faithful to that campaign, the Halo fans probably would have loved them for it. Oh yeah, because right now there's there were Halo mm -hmm. fans who liked some stuff, and the show was about two percent close to the source yeah. material, um, yeah. arguably negative. But yeah, if they were half accurate to beloved games, then oh, it would have been a whole different story. Oh well. Uh, usually, did you watch the Conan episode of Hot Ones? Yes, it was funny as hell. He's brilliant. <laughs> highly recommend really everyone good. check it out he's funny as fuck not that you wouldn't have known that already but the specifically him on hot ones was pretty funny um looks like they bought brought all of springfield to build those blast doors uh they may not have the best tools or know-how but they have a wheelbarrow full of love exactly that's the blast door in episode four i think and then uh, someone said the chosen Quan. yes it's very good they brought her back and is is there not indication that she could end up being uh, the grave mind in season two? Oh man, uh, can't believe they teased <laughs> that. Quan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Why not? Eh? Quan and the flood and the the voices and the visions of the past and the ancestor magic. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's just what we want to see. Uh, so if this Arbiter steals a kill from an elite, that elite has the honor right to butcher Arbiter, right? Or is this Arbiter a cliché douche? Hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, cliché well, douche. Well, hey, look, right? As I explained, there's a case to be made that he's the best... <laughs> that Mr. Mandibles is the best character in, uh, in the whole show. Uh, hey, he yeah, can be a cliché yeah, douche true. and the best character. That's, that's true. true. He can. This is a show where being a cliche douche is like, oh, hey, a cliche is sort of like wow. a thing. Wow, <laughs> that's like a character. Ooh, wow. It's like when you, you point at the screen and you're like, ooh, look, a trope. They did a trope. That's interesting. They can read. They read they the writing thing. thing. Just, yeah, well, they've seen stuff before. Surely that's what that means. Uh, Kalak? Kalak is ten times more iconic than Shadow Gal. Exploding Demon Jock, who's the most wholesome character on the squad. Just having a good time smashing stuff and looking for a heart medication. I guess that's a Baldur's Gate 3 character, Carlac, right? Oh, okay. I'm unfamiliar. I'm playing Final Fantasy XV right now, talking about Lara Croft. I just got randomly photobombed by her in this game's photo gimmick. Alright, fair enough. I've not played that game either. A little out of the loop sometimes, you know. Mm. True gamer, but not a true, full true gamer. Can you let us do a fap about your experiences playing Pokemon video games? A lot of Pokemon fans in the community, so I think it'd be popular. Also, hi, Rags. Hello there. What is the average completion time for, like, Pokemon Gold or Silver, like that era? For I, know. I do not know. Really with the help not. of chat, it would be a lot quicker as well, but it could be a funny thing to have the three of us plus a few extras just, like, Play a campaign together or something. Depends how much time it would take. <laughs> I think that's an idea there, yeah. Uh, the Flood's introduction in Halo C is one of the best use of fear and suspense I've seen in an FPS. Not to mention amazing environmental storytelling builds up the reveal so perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's such a big tonal shift. Um, and it's, it's such a, like, a, a shift of gears in terms of a campaign tonally and mechanically and it just comes out of nowhere you don't really get much in the way of prep for it uh cortana says oh gosh go here and then the covenant are spooked by something and then you're in the scary swamp and you go down in the underground and so there's just this element of like what's what's going on here what 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 are we doing what what's happening what's up and it's ben. pulled off really well so uh, you see it on like a helmet cam or something right the first uh, yeah, Jenkins. Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, Jenkins, yeah. And this is after having traversed through, you know, it's like Rag said, you see that the Covenant are running away because they're scared, but then it's like walking through the containment facility and there's all of this, like, gunk on the walls and and it's very eerie. It's really cool. Ah, oh, gotta love environmental storytelling. Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Remember in season one's opening when guns only worked against the Covenant when Spartans held them, but not when regular humans did? Mm-hmm. I remember that. Good times. They know right where to shoot. That's the thing. They're just really good with it. They have a... They have a... They've ranked up their firearm skill really high. Mm-hmm. Not soldiers, though. They wouldn't, you know. Spartan movement in 2007 Halo 3 greater than 2024 TV series. Um, well, I'm just like the animation playing the game. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks better. Like the Starry Night, just him running through like the field. That looks better than it looks so fucking bad. The animation on the Spartans is like consistently awful. And I was watching behind the scenes where they said, Yeah, we did a lot more wire work and like we shot the action with them doing the action. And all I can think is maybe it wasn't a good idea to like use live action stuff that you shot and then you were just going to animate over it anyway so you get these really weird results where like the animation looks rough like the background feels like it's stitched together from several different photos mm -hmm. um I, I don't even know what the point is of, of showing like yeah no we did we did shots where they're where they're running with wires it's like yeah but what good is that if you if you animate over it badly why even bother why do all that extra effort 
What is this? Who are these people? Where are my boxes? How am I to know this is the iconic EFAP Schleupo? If isn't it the same? It is to me. I, I, I can't help you. If you can't identify Schleupo on your own, I mean, it feels like it's obvious where, you, where, where it's... This doesn't mean that developed while I was gone. It wasn't even on EFAP. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it on... Um... Real BBC. Okay. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I never... I, I, the Slurpo thing is... I saw the meme that we... The memes we watched, and they were mm. like, funny. But I, I'm not really... I don't know the lore of the Slurpo meme. It's just... Or wait, or wait, was that the um, was that the Jedi guy? Yeah, like Jedi. Okay. Well, the Jedi... he's someone you got to kill in like Jedi uh, Outlaw, but then you find out the Shalopo's boss, Shalopo Two, is is going to be mad at you for doing that. <laughs> and then we started saying you have to pay him in Shalopos, and you have to go to Shalopo, and it was just like, what the fuck is even Shalopo anymore? It's like it's what? it's all of the things. What the, <laughs> what the fuck is even Shalopo anymore? <laughs> Uh, if they get a season three, what's the bet they ignore the law where humans and forerunners and go with 343's awful Tron vampire forerunners instead? They are absolutely going with the 343 law. There's no point in even, like, expecting that that wouldn't be the case. It is 343 law hardcore. It's so 343 that they might even be doing the endless as well. Um, that that's it's absolutely is the case. Like, any idea or expectation that they would be dealing with the bungee law... <laughs> that is that is fantastical delusion. All right. Oh, very sad. That's if they get a season three. Which the fact that we haven't even heard if they've got one yet makes me wonder if they're going to get it. Hello, I have a question for all of you. Have any of you seen Bloodhounds on Netflix? And if you do, would you be interested in doing an EFAP episode on it? I have not seen that. I don't even know. I, heard of yeah, it. I don't know what this is. This is news to me. I've never heard of this. Bloodhounds. Yeah, I got nothing. No, yeah. Uh, hi, Fringy. Hey. I want to recommend the channel Clint's Reptiles, animal phylogeny, taught with an infectious joy about him. Check it out if you want to learn about how you are basically the hagfish of reptiles. No, I, I've, uh, I've seen that, that, uh, that channel's videos before. They have, like, videos uh, going through. They'll have, like, a, an animal will be like, hey, is this the pet for you? Are you interested in this bird or this reptile? Yeah, it's a cool channel and i agree it's got a he's very enthusiastic about animals it's lots of interesting little factoids good uh corkwana is the next evolution for sister ha all right compare this trash to the artas vadum cutscenes from halo 2 anniversary well, yeah, I mean, there's no point in the blur cutscenes for Halo 2 Anniversary. Just blow They're it out of the really way. really good. Um, they look better a lot of the time, even though it's yeah. a decade ago. Well, it's got like, um, the, they've got this style to them. The way that they, the way that they look is just really neat. There's, um, yes. they, they, yeah. it, it's hard to really explain, but they look really good. It, it's the great voice acting. It's the really cool scenes. It's the fact that the cutscenes themselves are just, really neat um it's i i'm curious how much those cost it was blur studios right yeah that's right i don't know how much they cost yeah i'm not sure maybe i could find out um those blur cut scenes cost about let's see about a million dollars a minute to make ah okay yeah they're quite expensive then I mean, it doesn't change the fact they still look better. Um, it it, look it better. just it looks better. And I wonder if they would be more or they probably be, would they be more or less expensive? Because, uh, the, well, you know, on a per minute basis, and... if it's if if you were to do it in that style for a whole season, then yes, it would definitely be more expensive than the show. Um, but I mean, you, there are other ways that you could do it. There are other ideas, other you know possibilities. But I guess, yeah, and, and it could if be you know going in, it would back be for then, you know. Yeah, if it you're going to commission a whole the show, then maybe that would cut the cost of buying a larger amount, like per minute, or maybe, maybe. they would know yeah. going in that a lot of it would be dialogue scenes and things of that nature, or they like they would know to plan ahead for it. So mm. it's tough to say, but I, obviously I'd much rather watch that because we could actually have you know God forbid like a show that feels like Halo. Like the Covenant could show up intermittently, even. Yeah, <laughs> you know, would nice. be like, hi, let's, let's fight. 
just past 2k subs, and the first part of my 8-hour uh, Elden Ring critique is now rendering. Mola, your DS2 videos were a huge inspiration for my channel. I wanted to let you know how I appreciated how appreciated you are. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, good job on the channel. Absolutely. And first yeah, 2,000 um, is the hardest. I, the DS2 ones, they just, they just keep uh, ones people mention the most in messages about past work from me that they, they really like. Uh, one of my one of my cursed uh, sort of adventures making that one. It was a huge amount of work and a really small amount of time again, but very much fueled by a defense of mathematosis and having recently finished uh, DS2 for the first time and being so fucking shocked that that was something they did. But hey, maybe it comes across as much more normal these days. It's like, what? The newest entry in a franchise is bad? Terrible. I am oblivious to the series, just a Mauler admirer that dropped in, but based on the conversation I've heard, Gizmo X exists to allow character to know why, and that has been ignored to progress the plot, i.e. plot hole slash lazy writing. Um... I don't remember what that would be applicable to and what we were talking about, but probably a lot of things in the Halo show. Gonna be one of them. Much of the hate for Spartan 4s, just on the basis they're 4s, just because a lot of them are weak. I think they work fine conceptually, but I haven't seen most of 343 stuff besides main games. High rags. Hello. The reason why people don't like Spartan Force is because the Spartan Force you met are like really lame and annoying. Um, that's like a big thing that's working against them. Is that, I mean, they're not likable for the most part. They're usually pretty annoying characters. Um, they don't feel like they have the discipline of a Spartan um, in the way that you see in you know Master Chief and also the Spartan Threes, where you know with with the Spartan Threes like in you know uh, Noble Team, yeah, they've all got different personalities and they can be a bit snarky. A few of them, but like they all ultimately have the temperament of. We're soldiers, we have a job to do, let's do it. Compared to, like, what you see with Spartan. Well, Sergeant officers. Johnson, like, yeah, they're, in a way. They're kind of goobers. Yeah, you have, yeah, like, exactly. Sergeant Johnson, he, he knew when it was time for fucking business, and he knew it when it was time to, you know, have levity, to joke around. He knew it when it was time to, like, all right, everyone, you know, we got a job to do, get in line. He knew how to lead the troops to motivate, uh, and he knew, you know, he was really good at keeping up morale. He wasn't yeah, just exactly. a dour, boring asshole. Well, and alternatively, he wasn't just, like, this goober who was, like, constantly, like, never taking things seriously. I think that's the main thing, again, that is working against the Spartan Fours, is that all of the Spartan Fours you meet are either incredibly lame or they're goobers. Uh, hi, I love EFAP, Nerdrotic, and Drinker, seeking based EFAPers to kill Terminids with Meep Meep 27. Oh, if you want to grab a, a person who's... Similarly interested in the podcast, listening to those who wants to play Halo the Hell Divers, and you said Halo. Uh, that would be Meep Meep Twenty Seven. Three Four Three should have named themselves Wheatley after the floating idiot from Portal Two. No, I like Wheatley though. <laughs> they shouldn't have. Any yeah, exactly. Uh, this feels mean. He's great. Yes, he is. Uh, Fringy just wanted goo, but he keeps getting sludge. Mm, Pretty much. Yeah. Unfortunate. Or Frickled. Oh, sweet, crispy critters. Halo show drowning in its own scum is the only joy in life. It was so easy. It was a free dub, but no. Pretty much, yeah. I don't think it was a free dub. Um, I think with how I everything goes, look commit. at Fallout. As long as they were willing to actually commit to being a Halo show, then you had the template there for you to use. But it seems like Definitely. the hard part now is just getting people to just fucking be the thing the idea that they had that amount of money they had almost ridiculously accurate uh, models from comparison to the game and they still managed to make everyone hate them i i do think that was a, a w sitting on the table the the hyper you know gold plated w is going to be hard for them to do but uh, they managed to fuck up so hard as people have pointed out had they had him in his helmet I do think, you know, like, there's a good chance that series would have been well-liked somewhat by, by a lot more people. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, probably, it, it should have been easy, but the reality is that they came into it with an attitude of, we're doing our own shit. Um, I think, I I certainly get the, I, I just find that any comments at all uh, on that show, like, from the people involved in it, of like, yeah, no, we, we like the games, we cared about the games. It's like, can you just stop? 
stop pr- saying that. Like I'm lying. Just, you know, it's it's obvious that that's not how you feel. I I know it. I just, I know that the, the it it is like it, there's no way to look at that show and not come away with the sense of yeah, look, all right, those are the little you know those games. They're what they are, and you know for the time that's always my favorite run at the time or for the time you know that they they were good. But we're doing our own thing. We're doing our own. You're like this is going to be exciting. It's going to be great, and you can't complain. It's silver timeline, okay? Different timelines. So we like. It, to me, it, it's starting to feel like um, the Halo show is, is kind of like what they wanted Halo to be, but what it was impossible to make Halo be because you had five games that lock you into a certain type of uh, tone, a certain kind of story, um, and, and that, that it was difficult, as opposed to starting completely new where you could do whatever you wanted. I think that um, if we were... If it was a bunch of people who were super incompetent but really liked it, then it might look something more akin to a Zack Snyder movie than it would than it would what we got. Um, just a completely talentless uh, guy who who had complete misplaced passions about things, who can't make good art. Um, it wouldn't look like what we got, which was a total like I don't even want to say subversion. It was just clearly something different using Halo skin. Uh, and I wish we got that in a way, uh, but this was like it's just it has this dourness about it and this depressing, holier than thou kind of attitude. Um, any League of Legends voice lines you want to hear in Arcane Season Two? And their example is "Join the Glorious Evolution," which is a Victor line. Um, I mean, submit to my designs that could be slipped into normal dialogue i think anything they can do like that would be really cool um you know because so, some of the stuff in the game is a little goofy but getting any references that are harmless and they'll be fun relinquish the flesh that sort of stuff who knows i'm what sure they've been thinking about which ones they'll throw in mm-hmm. and where the show will be sufficiently hyped i believe by the time it's coming out let's hope it lives up to it who can say on that note, though, that's the last message, so thank oh, you all so oh very much. We hey. appreciate it. And for now, we shall say goodbye. Yeah, everyone. Catch you later, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.